And we're live. It's time again for Drummer Nation Live here on Facebook. Um, show all about drums and drummers where we discuss all things related to drums. We have a big show today. We have a winner in the Stanton Moore Drum Academy subscription, annual subscription. It's a great prize. We have a winner chosen from those who have signed up for our mailing list that I will be announcing on the show. We have a cool topic, electronic versus acoustic drums. You see them both behind me. And we have a special guest in Shane Kinney, the owner and proprietor of Drum Center of Portsmouth. A lot to get to. Big show. Let's get it rolling. Here we go. Whoops. It's time for a Drummer Nation. help facilitate that and have an impact on your life so that you can play drums, that means the world to me. The former Crescent Vanguard series are now widely available as part of the legendary Sabian HH models. HH symbols are traditionally hand hammered into shape and sound by Sabian craftsmen. Find out more about the Vanguard series and all other Sabian models at Sabian.com. Hi, this is Stanton Moore. I've been playing and teaching drums for over 30 years. My new site, Stanton Moore Drum Academy, is the perfect online drum learning platform for any level drummer to learn how to play the drums the same way I did. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of you as subscribers on the site, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun. When seated at the drums, pressure on the tailbone, lower back, and hip joints can lead to pain. Only Carmichael drum thrones are scientifically designed to relieve and prevent discomforts associated with prolonged sitting. Carmichael thrones, we got your back. And with that, we're back and we're live. I don't need this except for certain elements of this. Well, you know, as of last night at midnight, uh, I had no show. <laughs> My guest had to cancel. Uh, these things happen. And I didn't have a topic because he was going to be the whole show. But, you know, I've become resourceful in my in my old age, and I uh, came up with a great topic, and I called upon a good friend, a supporter of the show, Shane Kenny at Drum Center of Portsmouth, who will be popping in through the magic of electronics and what I can do with the switching software. So we have a big show, as it turns out. Let's get to it. First of all, uh, we've been running a, a contest where if you subscribe to the Drummer Nation newsletter, which you do at drummernation.com, uh, something like that, you would have been automatically entered into the pro contest to win a full year subscription to the Stanton Moore Drum Academy. Stanton is also a sponsored business partner and a pal, so it only made sense to do it that way. And um, so we have a winner. I selected at random from about 1,100 people, uh, and it turned out the winner is somebody I actually know. His name is Scott Pryan. Scott Pryan is a young drummer, used to live in Atlanta. I don't have any idea where he is now. I know he moved away, but he had done a little few things for uh, Classic Drummer, and he had some stuff online that was getting a lot of hits. Scott Pryan, a great young drummer. You'll be hearing from me, young man, and congratulations on that scholarship. I guess you'd call it a subscription, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's an annual membership subscription to the Stanton Moore Drum Academy, where there's all kinds of great stuff for beginners. If you're a teacher, you might be able to use some of that stuff, or, of course, for your own playing. Uh, beginning to super advanced. So Scott Pryan, you're the lucky man, and a, a good man you are. Next, um, I have a topic I want to get to, but before that I want to get Shane, because uh, he's patiently waiting to come on board. And let me see if I can get him on Skype. This is Shane Kinney we're going to be dialing up here. And... It's a short format, so I like to do the big interviews. Whoops, the that's not it. Short format stuff. That's a show I'm watching. <laughs> not the right thing. 
So let me go back to my Skype. Give me a second, folks. You know, once I'd like to do this thing where nothing goes wrong. Hey, there he is. Are you there, Shane? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, let me put you on. You don't mind if I put you on, uh, on live, right? Go ahead. Yeah. There he is, Shane Kinney. How are you, brother? I'm great, man. How are you? Good. Let me try a little experiment with sound here. Okay. Try not to blow anything up. All right. I just didn't want you coming back through my mics as I... Never mind. <laughs> I can hear you just fine. I think I need these on. Uh, so anyway, Shane Kinney, you came into the scene when I had my company. How long have you been open? When did you open? Well, uh, I opened this store in 2009. In 2009, I remember I had crescent symbols. I'm sorry, Bosphorus symbols yep. changed later to crescent. And we were having a very hard time adding dealers as fast as dealers were going out of business. You came onto the scene with a whole new thing and made quite an impact. Congratulations on that. Things are going very well, right? It keeps growing. We're going in the right direction. So, yeah. Now, what was your philosophy going into it that might have been different than anybody else's from some of the older shops? I, I don't know if, what was really different. It was just uh, it's always been do the right thing and try to make the right suggestions and be helpful. That was Personal service. <laughs> it's really... Yeah. It's uh, that was it. Just work hard. I, you, I, I, mean, I don't know what the magic formula is. It just, uh, just you try have, to do the uh, thing. You have lessons there, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah. And do you uh, sell online? Yep, of course. Yeah, we I, do. I know uh, you do. You have a good, a great site. It's funny you say, of course, because when I when I was involved in this stuff ten years ago, oh man. I got hell from dealers who would tell me uh, I had an illegitimate business model because I sold to dealers who sold online. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I so when I started in the industry, uh, when I was working at another store, that was 99, I think is when I saw it. So I've been doing this for almost 20 years. Uh, the internet, I remember our reps were coming in and be like, you know, this is the direction it's going. And nobody was buying online at that time. Uh, it was just catalogs. So I remember what the drum store experience was like when it was your main competitor was just the catalogs. And then I re you know, recall when the Internet started coming in. So I, I saw it from their perspective of the, the old school re brick and mortar retailer. I, I, you know, I could clearly empathize with that. Uh, I think where I was fortunate was that I saw that era of the drum retailing, and now I saw where it was going, too. So we try to create a hybrid of both here. I think that's the key. I used to try to say, uh, look, the, the decision is not me as a manufacturer and you as a dealer to make. It's the customers, and they've been choosing in big numbers to buy online. Yep. So uh, we all as an industry needed to answer to that, and I think the ones who have in addition to having the great brick and mortar experience are the ones who are doing well. Yeah. We're still like the technology, it continues to be amazing, but it also impedes things because, you know, the demands of the, the consumer that have, you know, be, become more uh, great, it, specifically with symbols, you know, there's all these guys that are like, well, what's the weight in grams, you know, of this particular symbol? <laughs> It, well, it, I can it, tell you that used to drive me nuts, the weight yeah, of grams. We, yeah. we, I, I ended up eliminating that. We started out with to show as a marketing tool that every symbol was a little different because they were handmade. But yeah. it was only one measure. So I could find a symbol at 1,650 grams that would be a higher pitch and yep. um, uh, less expressive than one that was maybe heavier, depending on all the other factors. Yeah. So, I mean, we would have dealers order, I want this at 1,457 grams. And the guys in Turkey would just kind of laugh, like, come on, man. We're starting yeah. with a blank that we pour yeah. liquid metal into a pot. And you want it at how many grams? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, where that boils down to is you can hear the symbol, you can talk to somebody at the store, and you can find what you want that way. Yeah. Uh, kudos to you for doing that and seeing that. Yeah. Now, let me ask you about acoustic versus electronic. Yeah. Electronics are coming on. What percentage of your sales would you say is electronic? Oh, it's very small. Um, it, it's it's probably 5%, but that's changing because we just finally brought on Roland. Like we, we, we carry Yamaha and ATV, um, 
and uh, we dabble with the pearl and the infused, but we just brought on Roland. I was, you know, I have a, a very harsh opinions about electronic drums. I think they're really wonderful in a lot of aspects. Uh, but what I don't like about electronic drums is parents who are buying them instead of acoustic drums for drummers that are getting started. Uh, I don't like that uh, because I really feel like those are they're, they're plastic pads and they don't really invoke passion. Uh, they just look like a Nintendo or a DVD player. I want I want drummers that are getting started to look at chrome and brass and shiny things that make them feel excited. <laughs> about when you were a kid, didn't you just look at a set of drums and stare yeah, at it? I still do. Yeah, but, I don't, too, you know, I, but I'll look at electronic drums that way, the real high end ones, you know, that are super expensive. But mm -hmm. you know, when you look at the seven or eight hundred dollar ones, it's like, just like pads and cables. And, so I know that they have their place, and where I see they, they've been helpful, especially it's kind of like in the, the broken home scenario. If if mom and dad are no longer together, no longer together, then one of them will have an electronic set at their house so that junior can play at both homes. So you know that's mm -hmm. kind of where I feel like electronics have their place in terms of that lower price point. And as for higher end, then you know sky's the limit as to what you can do. And, and we're starting to embrace it a little bit more. Well, I have mixed feelings about it. In fact, it's my topic of the day uh, that I'll get to after I let you go. But um, a lot of pros and cons. And one of the one of the cool things is that once you get out of the module sounds and go into software through MIDI, the sounds get a lot better, in my opinion. But it's a big learning curve, and it's a pain in the ass. you got to bring all that stuff and have a... And then the other thing worth pointing out, I think, and I'll, I'll touch on this a little more later, is that once you buy the electronic kit, Unless you just want to practice with it, you're not done there. <laughs> you have to have something to hear it through, right? Yep. And uh, all that stuff. So, what what's hot? What are the hot products these days? I don't necessarily mean brands, but uh, is it right low end now. kits, high end kits? Um, yeah, well, high end kits. Collectible are really cool. snare drums. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We just did. Uh, we I, I don't know. We've been doing uh, a whole new series of videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, that uh, we just shot a Thomas Starr one. Like the Thomas Starr drums have been very, very popular here. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also did a Yamaha shootout uh, video, which has been really well received. So Tama and Yamaha are pretty hot right now. DW has been really uh, popular. There seems, you know, every brand is, is sort of doing really well right now in terms of drums. Cool. Uh, you know, cannabis is, is really strong right now. Like drum sets, right out of nowhere, people are buying cannabis drum sets. Um, That's great. Those are good, good tubs too. Um, Riser, I'll tell you that the hottest thing right now. The, you remember the um, Yamaha Groove Wedge? It was something they did with the Wes Miller. It was like you you put it on the uh, the snare drum. So when you do your cross stick, it was this right. 19 ply wedge. So you have a nice wooden cross stick. Well, when Russ Miller left Yamaha, he, they discontinued that item. Well, Rim Riser's been doing a metal version for years. He finally did this uh, maple one, and uh, yeah, that's been selling like hotcakes. That's cool. One of the things that's sometimes hard to do, even on electronic kits, is to hear that stick click sound. Yeah, I think Roland's really addressed that on the TD50, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, one point I, I'd like to make is you mentioned uh, a video you did. When people go online, when dealers go online, it's not like it's free. <laughs> you know, you have to come up with the technology to do it. You have a team that does online stuff. You have to set up a video studio that requires lighting and cameras and software. And it's a big expense, isn't it? It's tremendous. Tremendous. Mm -hmm. And it's something that you know, there's a huge learning curve there, too, where you don't just, you know, if you can see our first videos are so primitive compared to what you know where we are now but you just keep trying to get a little better every time i'm in the same boat one of these Not days i'm going to get through a show like this without a mistake <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you know you lose that battle yeah, I'm human you know? yeah yeah uh anyway uh it's great to hear from you and to see you i appreciate you being a sponsor of the show and I yeah. wish you continued success with one of the best stores in the country if you're not familiar with it it is the drum center Tell us what it is. Drum Center of Portsmouth in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. DrumCenterNH.com. That's what I wanted to hear. All right, Shane, I'll check in with you again. Thank you for doing my show last minute. Thank you. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. Yeah.
All right, if you look up nice guy in the dictionary, you're going to find a picture of Shane Kinney. So uh, I wish him a lot of luck. He's been one of the new voices in the industry that have really helped things. I only need the headphones when I'm bringing in additional assets. So we've covered the prize, Scott Pryan. We had a nice chat with Shane Kinney at Drum Center of Portsmouth. And uh, I'd like to get to the topic briefly. I might break it into two. I have a top 10 list, you might say, of pros and cons of electronic drums. And we touched upon some of those with Shane. First of all, uh, the, the numbers I'm hearing, now every drum shop's gonna have a little different number, and I think the drum shops are gonna tend more towards skewing towards the acoustic drums. But I'm hearing numbers like 60% of sales are electronics now. And, um, I want to know what you guys think. I don't want to offer an opinion. Uh, I mean, a, 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 I'm not trying here to give you a, an answer. I just want to point out some of the questions like I like to do. So let's get into that, and I'll see how far we get. Oops, lost my sheet. Uh, can't lose your sheet, man. Okay, the first one is volume. He mentioned that. Uh, Shane mentioned that. Let's say you live in an apartment. You are surrounded by neighbors, or you're in a home where nobody's really keen on listening to you practice a drum. We had pads, we have drum set pads that go back for decades, but we also now have electronics. And one of the things that they are good at is volume. Another thing is on the technology side, you have a lot of things built into the drums. You have a metronome, first of all. Man, when I was a kid, I used to have to put on, I'd buy a little metronome with an earpiece, you know, a little pocket metronome and an earpiece, not even headphones. And I'd wear shooter's headphones over that, that took out all the other sound, and then tried to play softly with the drums so I could hear it. It was that much of a pain in the ass to play with a click when I was a kid. Now you can do it all just fine with an electronic drum set because there are metronomes built in and some teaching programs built in where it'll click for a while and nod or it'll time you or play you back or whatever. There also is the ability to play with tracks, which we could always do, but, but it's quite easy to, to bring in something from your MP3 player through an electronic kit and also the ability to record oneself right in the module, depending on the module you get. Uh, so I would look at that as a positive. Technique. It's a different technique. It's not like you learn how to play the drums and then you just apply it to electronic drums. In fact, a lot of the things, and I've spoken with a lot of the guys in, in the electronic business, some of my good friends, a lot of it is counterintuitive. For example, you're getting these giant sounds that were created in, in the best of circumstances, but you only really need to touch them. So what I've found is the more expressive you want it to be, if I play it softer and softer with a big tip stick, Big tip stick, where do I have my big tip sticks? Here they are. I'm using a, I don't know if you can find these anymore, Zildjian Ronnie Venucci stick because of this. The bead on that sucker is giant. And it makes it easier to track on electronic drums. I know Mike Snyder, my buddy, has a stick with Firth. Uh, the e-stick, I think it's called, for electronic drums. So anyway, the point is you have to approach it like a different instrument. It is a different instrument. If you look at it that way and embrace that, it can be wonderful. If you think it is tantamount to playing a drum set, a natural kit and cymbals, it isn't. So that's one thing. The feel is not as responsive. You know, you only have 127 velocities, which is their name for volume, and Depending on the samples you're going to use, you can't use more than that. Now, the, in the worst of cases, years ago, a sampled sound would be maybe two or three samples at different volume levels. Now I know for the, uh, for the uh, software engines like BFD, which I have some products out for, um, there are hundreds and hundreds of samples for each sound. Like, for example, with a cymbal, we would do maybe 30 or 40 from pianissimo to fortissimo, trying to get this on screen. Uh, near the edge, you know, the, the playing surface, the bow, and then another of that uh, at the bell, and then another across the edge as a crash. So you end up with hundreds of samples, and they open and close seamlessly, and you get a lot, to me, a better sound than you do in most of the modules. I think the trend in the new modules is going to be to try to incorporate both elements of that, the, the ability to use other sounds equally with uh, the module sounds, or have those module sounds be as good as the software sounds. Anyway. 
it turns out that as popular as these drums are, whenever you see highly nuanced music, you're never going to see really an acoustic jazz trio with an electronic drum set. I guess the acoustic is the word that gave that away. But if you're playing with a grand piano and an upright bass, I doubt if you're going to want to use an electronic drum set. Okay? That's number four. Sound, we talked about. They're better with VSTs, uh, but to record, if you notice the theme to my thing, my show here, was done on my dining room table with my son. He wrote the music and played everything, and I played, except the drums, and I played drums on a Zen drum, which, that little thing pointing up back there, boy, it's hard to do in reverse, is the tip of my Zen drum, which you wear like a guitar and program to play that way. And the sounds you can get are amazing in that they're going to go into a full-blown studio with big ceilings and uh, thousands and thousands of dollars of microphones, and you can adjust them all to the infinite degree. And if you... I can't get that sound with my natural kit in this room, no matter what I did. So if you want a big rock and roll kind of sound, a funk, progressive, hip, Whatever's going on now kind of sound, it's going to be hard to get that out of a natural set of drums sitting behind us. And as a matter of fact, little John Robinson, Robinson uh, was a guest on my show, and he told me when he works with these hip-hop gospel acts that they have the sounds already. So they're going to give you your bass drum and your snare drum sound from the producers, and you're not even going to, you're going to have triggers or maybe electronics, but you're not going to be doing it yourself. Okay, that's five of the ten, you know, since we had Shane save me on this show. I think I'm going to leave it with that. We're at 23 minutes coming up, and I don't like these shows to go much longer than that. So on the next show, I will continue with this uh, theme of electronic versus acoustic. I hope that's been of some help to you. There are no right or wrong answers, of course. It's whatever you think is right for you as a player. Uh, the new Drummer Nation show itself has Joe Corsello as a guest, and it's a two-parter, too, because we got to talking and spent like an hour. I didn't want to do a show that was an hour. But if you look on the Drummer Nation website or the YouTube channel or Facebook or any of the podcatchers, iTunes, Stitcher, whatever you want, Podbean, you can find those shows and subscribe to them and check them out. Uh, the next one after... Part two of Joe Corsella will be David Garibaldi, who I was thrilled to speak with when he was here in Atlanta. And there's a great interview uh, or article I just read that's been posted on Drumeo from David that really goes into specifics about his accident and his recovery, which I didn't really talk about with him. I was more focused on drums. So be on the lookout for that. If you want to help a show, you can go to Patreon. Let me get rid of that bug we can go to patreon.com backslash or forward slash drummer nation and pledge us a little something 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 if you don't mind that would be cool coming up soon on classic drummer magazine i do a lot of work for them they have an interview i mean they have a, a new edition coming out very soon that will feature zigaboo modal east who was my interview i'm thrilled to say and i i was thrilled to do that and russ miller who uh, Shane mentioned briefly, and Fred Gretsch. Those are all going to be in the upcoming edition of Classic Drummer Magazine, which will be out imminently, pretty soon. Okay, and I'll let you know when it, when it does. All right, I don't have any comments here. Hello, my friend. I'm from Honduras. Onan Rosales. Hey, Onan, my pleasure, man. Thank you for watching. Uh, I've got some thumbs up here. It's hard to tell why you're doing this show. Who's watching? And most people don't watch it live anyway. They watch it in, in archive, where it will be on all those places I told you, not the podcast sites, but the website and YouTube is a playlist for them, Facebook, of course. So I guess that's all I have this week. Um, thanks again to Shane Kinney. Congratulations to Scott Pryan. And um, we'll pick up this electronic versus acoustic discussion at a later date, hopefully next week. All right, that's it. I guess we'll... Sign off here. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time on Drummer Nation Live. Bye. This is your host, Michael Vosbein, and I'd like to thank our friends at Sabian Symbols. Sound Synergies, 
Stanton Moore Drum Academy and Drum Center of Portsmouth. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.